What's up guys, Justin here and what I wanted to talk about today is your memory and how your memory sort of affects you. So basically every experience that you have in life really at some point is just going to end up as a memory. Every job you've had, every relationship you've been in, every holiday that you've been on, at some point it's just going to end up as some sort of weird sort of mental blur when you're sort of 85 and you're sitting on your porch with a cup of tea. So the first concept in regards to memory is there's a difference between the sort of random sort of just general memories that you have and the sort of highlight memories that really sort of just stand out. So when I was younger I could sort of logically think, okay I'm here for 85 years or something and there's all these experiences to be had. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to have all these experiences and then I'm going to die basically. And then after a while I started to think, it's cool that I've done all these things, but a lot of them are sort of just these blurry things in my brain. And the things that really sort of just stand out are the things I really worked hard for. So, let's say for example I'm playing basketball and I'm maybe working on a certain jump shot. I'm not really going to remember all the times I was in the gym sort of just working on that jump shot, plugging away, missing that shot. I'm going to remember the time, maybe six months later, where all that hard work paid off for that one moment where I hit that shot in a game and it was a really close situation or something and it was a sort of highlight memory. So once you've got this memory, and the thing with this is you get to decide what you worked hard for. Maybe sort of working hard could be putting yourself in a situation where you can have a nice conversation with someone. Or maybe working hard for you would be singing in front of 500 people or something. You get to decide what a highlight memory is for you. So once you've got this sort of memory, it's kind of like in Harry Potter when Harry has to sort of fight away these Dementors, which are basically these skeleton things which cause fear and despair and the only way for Harry to sort of fight these things away is to use a spell where he has to think of the happiest sort of memory that he has and the, the best thing that's happened to him. So I thought this was a really cool metaphor because if you worked hard to achieve something you can sort of summon that memory whenever you need to as a way to sort of stay positive through those tough times in life. So the next concept in regards to memory is that it's very subjective and you're going to interpret your memories differently depending on how you feel. So let's say for example you're feeling really good, maybe you sort of, I don't know, aced a test or something. And if you're feeling really good at that point and you sort of remember something bad that happened to you, you might interpret the memory a little bit differently. You might sort of think, I'm glad I went through that and maybe who I am today, I learned all these lessons from it. And you might as well even sort of tweak the memory a little bit depending on how you feel before you sort of put it back into your some sort of memory box. So if you understand the sort of concept, you can use it to your advantage if you want to sort of do well on a test. Maybe you can sort of try and put yourself in the same mood that you were when you were studying when you do the test. A lot of education these days is still based on a lot of sort of memorized testing, which in my opinion isn't really an accurate assessment of intelligence, because in reality a lot of life is about how you feel, creativity, and if you're smart enough to watch a video like this with an open mind, you're probably smart enough to do anything you said you might do if you're willing to fail enough but it is what it is. So the last concept in regards to memory is that memory is very visual. So I went to a memory seminar once with a guy who was a memory expert who could remember pi to 500 decimal places or something and what he did was he showed us a slideshow of 30 people's different faces and pretty much everyone in the room could get 30 out of 30. Everyone sort of remembered all the faces that they'd seen. Then he did the same thing just with names and people were getting sort of maybe 8 out of 30. So if you want to sort of remember where you put your keys or something, you can sort of try and access the visual part of your brain and if you put your keys on the desk, picture the desk being set on fire or something. So maybe you've got those sort of diary entries, maybe you've got those sort of songs that really sort of take you back to a certain time in your life, maybe you've got those sort of friends that you catch up with and just sort of reminisce and share stories about the past. But if you work hard to achieve those highlight memories, you're sort of very conscious about how you feel and understand how you might be interpreting memories and you can sort of access your visual memories and that part of your brain. You can sort of use memory to your advantage and you can use them to stay positive throughout your life.